Good morning and welcome back to PLAS TV. New research by a recent PhD graduate of Stellenbosch University has shed light on what olive tree farmers can do to curb trunk diseases in their orchards. PLAS TV recently visited Dr. Megan van Dijk in the Western Cape to talk about this issue. We also catch some tips on how to prune trees when humidity levels are low and how to apply wound protection within the first week after pruning. We then chat to Leanne Jones from PMA about the incredible role that women play in agriculture. For now, over to Lisa for the news. Welkom bij vandaagse nieuws. Swine Nutrition Management het in samenwerking met Bainsveel die stuit na by Timaritsburg in Kozulu Natal. Een onafhankelijke navorsingseenheid vir die varkbedrijf op die been gebring. Dit is die eerste navorsingseenheid in Zuid-Afrika wat nie aan die universiteit verbonde is nie. Wie je stuit van Swine Nutrition Management het met Plaas TV hieroor gesels. Ons het die geleentheid aangegryp om saam met Bainsveld Ekstuit een navorsingstal hier op te rig. Dit sal die eerste van sy soort wees hier in Afrika. Dit sal ons in staat stel om nieuwe idees en concepte te toets en om seker te maak ons is altyd op die voorpunt van internationale tendense. Die doel van die faciliteit is om dan um, navorsing om oop te stel aan die bedrijf, uh, um, in die industrie wat dan graag wil producte toets, genetische maatschappije, voermaatschappijen uh, om, om producten te kom toets. Ons is heel onafhankelijk van universiteiten, so dit sal hulle in staat stel, ons het personeel wat die te proeven dan sal uitvoer en daar ook dan die volledige die protocols daarvan skryf, die statistische ontledings daarvan doen. Die nieuwe wolseisoen het verlede week op een laanoot weggespring. Dit het gesluit in een waarde van 137 rand 37 cent per kilogram skoonwol wat daai op een afname van 5,7%. 8146 bale is aangebied, waarvan 94,45% verkoop is. Die aanvankelijke aanbod is met 1280 bale verminder. Die zwakke rand kon nie die prijsvlakke ondersteun nie, en die mark het in Amerikaanse dollar terme 7,7% laar verhandel. Volgens een persverklaring van die Zuid-Afrikaanse Citrus Kwekersvereniging verwacht producenten van die West- en Noordkaap een record uitvoersaisoen naar die Verenigde Staten. Met ongeveer 60.000 ton citrus wat na Philadelphia gestuur word. Dit daai op een toename van 9% ten oor die vorige record wat in 2018 opgestel is toe 55.000 ton citrus verskeep is. Citrus uitvoeren na Amerika het die afgelopen 10 jaar met 60% toegeneem. En dis dan vandagse nies, maar Plaas TV was onlangs by Dr. Megan van Dijk in die Westkaap om raad te kry oor wat boere kan doen om siektes by olijfbome te bestuur. Ons kyk bykie later na hierdie interessante inzetsel. Simparika by Zoietis Your best friend's best friend. The olive industry in South Africa is relatively small compared to some of the other, like the grapevine industry. Um, there's approximately 3,100 hectares planted. So common pests of olive trees include the um, olive beetle, the olive lace bug, and the... Um, olive fruit fly and then common diseases or diseases that cause the most damage is anthracnose and peacock spot disease and then um, trunk diseases are often overlooked though because of its slow development but I've recently also started receiving attention um, globally. The pruning of the lower branches also called skirting can be done um, to reduce the uh, branches being exposed to shade and um, and uh, dew and um, weeds 
and that further reduces the risk of disease. It's been recommended that the pruning be done, the large pruning of large branches been done in midwinter. And this is to remove disease branches, uh, branches that have grown too tall or branches that, or parts of branches that are obstructing sunlight. And then the skirting can also be done during midwinter. And then in um, spring, the regrowth from the winter pruning can be managed. Um, and uh, smaller cuts can be done, but this should be done after the buds have differentiated into flower buds. Trunk diseases are caused by um, fungal pathogens that have the ability to infect um, woody plants and cause symptoms such as decline of the uh, trees or dieback of twigs and branches. Um, and some of them also cause cankers. After s recent surveys and pathogenicity studies, we found a large diversity of fungal pathogens that are associated with the olive trunk um, symptoms um, and trunk disease symptoms. And uh, some of these have already been established pathogens before our study in other countries like in America and um, Italy. Um, but we also found a lot of new species and some that haven't been associated with olive trees before. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, fungi that was associated the most frequently is an undescribed Pseudofarmonella species. Goedemorgen kijkers, en vandaag is het er mijn verslag van wat gezien wordt dat de prijzen van wetmilies, geomilies, zowel als sojabonen die afgelopen week weer redelijk goed gevaar het verlevering in december. Hier die prijsstijging is grootliks van de steen door internationale prijzen wat hoer verhandel het. In Amerika is al bykie oeskade en verkoop is ook redelijk op met sterk uitvoeren wat naar China toe gaan vir milie, sowel als sojabonen. Die koringprijs die afgelopen week het verlevering in december met 1.1% gedaal, terwijl sonneblomme ook even terug gesak het met 0.4%. Die olieprys het vir die tweede achter en volgende week even gedaal en is week op week met 0.3% af, terwijl die rand sy voete gevind het in die vernaamste geld eenhede en met 0.6% in oor die dollar in die pond versterk het en 0.7% sterker ten oor die euro verhandel. Nutrifeeds, die formule vir sukses. They usually infect via wounds, and in most cases pruning wounds, and this is why um, pruning wound protectant, protection is such an important aspect of managing olive trunk diseases. Uh, they can also, so these infections can occur in, in olive orchards or in um, in the propagation process. So for grapevine, um, these infections occur in nurseries and uh, we identified olive nurseries as a potential inoculum source. So uh, we sampled the olive propagation material and um, two other stages in the nursery process. And uh, we found that some of these pathogens were in the nurseries and that the infections were um, mostly from the basal end, the bottom end of rooted cuttings and trees, potted trees. So this suggested that the um, inoculum sources are in the growing medium or in, and in the potting mixture. Um, and interestingly though, the uh, Pseudofarmonella species wasn't detected often in um, the nurseries. So we also screened pruning debris from um, olive orchards for the fruiting bodies. Uh, of actually all of the trunk pathogens and um, the fruiting bodies are, are little structures that produce the spores and then um, release the spores into the air. Um, and we found the Pseudofarmonella uh, species uh, Pignidia, which is the fruiting bodies in the orchards. The olive industry is quite small relative to the grapevine industry. So um, the, they have, uh, the industry has limited um, products that are registered for olive trees in South Africa. So um, this means they also have limited pruning wound protectants and 
Um, so, but regardless, I did a um, survey um, to see what the producers are using and I selected those um, products and some other experimental treatments and um, did experiments to see how effective it is against the Pseudofarmonella species and we found that one of the products that are being used by the olive industry which is tree seal was the most effective but we have to um, still read or do, do more experiments uh, on a wider range of trunk pathogens just to get an overall idea. The pruning wounds remain susceptible for up to 42 days or longer um, and this is to the Pseudofarmonella species. We don't know how long it stays effect, um, susceptible to other um, trunk pathogens and this still has to be followed up. But the susceptibility does decrease significantly over time and uh, we found that the winter and spring, there was no difference in uh, the susceptibility between winter and spring pruning. It affects the spore germination and um, infection. So um, pruning during low relative humidity can actually maybe be used for a, as a protection measure. And then after pruning, just also apply a pruning wind protectant. Het jy wat het vat om die 2020 Toyota SA Nationale Jong Afslaar te word? Wees ons jou stal en stuur vandag toch jou video inskrywing in. Heel wat prijse vir rechtstreekse wenners en ons groot wenners slaan een oorseese reis na Canada los. WhatsApp jou naam en nommer na 066-231-2430 vir meer inlichting. Inskrywing sluit 15 augustus. Terme en voorwaarde geld. Standardbank, voluit voor en toe. It's Women's Month, an opportunity to celebrate women's achievement and the important role that women play in the country and its economy. And today we're talking to one of them, and that's uh, Leanne Jones. She's country manager of PMA Southern Africa. Leanne, welcome to PLAS TV. Lovely, thank you Lisa, it's wonderful to be here. Just quickly refresh our minds, who are PMA? So the PMA is the shortening of our name, which is the Produce Marketing Association, and we are a global association specifically for the fresh produce industry and all the value chain within the fresh produce industry. We have 2,600 members worldwide, Besides offices in the U.S. and a lot of our memberships in the U.S., we also have members in Canada, Chile, Brazil, Mexico, South Africa, and also Australia and New Zealand. So we are a uniquely global association bringing everyone together in the fresh produce industry to drive consumption, awareness, and thought leadership. Now, you country manager, what does this, in ro this role entail? So we have quite a strong and active membership here in South Africa. We have over 100 members. And the role of country manager in South Africa is about engaging with our members, um, having volunteer groups. We have a country council um, where we tackle some of the key challenges and issues in fresh produce in South Africa and collectively use our industry leaders to try and find some solutions to those problems. We also support the industry through connecting them locally and also internationally for business. As you know, we have a very big export um, sector in South Africa, particularly on fresh fruit. And we also do a lot of research and providing a lot of know-how um, for our members 
um, from everything from COVID, how do you manage COVID in your pack houses, to understanding the, the landscape setup, to um, information on, on food safety. So it's quite a diverse range of information that we share and we, we give them really sort of the, the building blocks to help them improve their business. What attracted you to this career? Goodness me, I did my degree in animal science and genetic engineering. Oh, okay. um, and people ask me all the time, how have you moved out of that into fresh produce? But I um, went to go and work in, in Europe. And there I got onto a development program or graduate training pro program, which was in fresh produce and working across supply chain and fresh produce and the suppliers into retailers. And I just loved it. It was so diverse. I mean, I was one day digging up potatoes in a field and tripping up and landing on my bum. And, you know, the next day I was doing marketing and, you know, doing TV campaigns and, and things like that. And I just loved the passion of the people. I loved the the energy and the diversification that you could do coming into to the industry. And it's natural. I mean, fruit and vegetables and, and flowers are just, they come from the earth. They're good for you in all sorts of ways. What a lovely product to work with. What is your message to women considering a career in agriculture? So I, I think agriculture has changed from maybe, you know, what we think about everyone wearing khakis and, and working the land there is a very glamorous side to it as well. And there's so many opportunities for, you know, what takes your fancy. So you, if you're very technical and you're into to that side of things, there are lots of roles in the technical food safety sides. If you're a real operations person, there's a role there. And if you like a little bit more of the glam side and into marketing, you know, I've had a, an experience where I'm, I've been on in London, on the you know, looking over the London Bridge, drinking a glass of champagne, celebrating a campaign launch there. So, as a woman coming in, there's a great array of opportunities for you in your career. The people are passionate, and you've got a real career path in the industry. And you also know that you're doing something worthwhile. Food is incredibly important, and we've learned that from you know, the pandemic that we've just been in. And so you also know that you're contributing to society in providing um, sustenance and food and sustainable access to food for people. Now, getting back to PMA and the mm -hmm. reason why you are, you are in South Africa, yes. <laughs> you'll be hosting the 10th Fresh Connection South Africa conference this month. How will this happen and, and what can, can we look forward to? Well, we have moved to a virtual conference. Of course. Um, we weren't <laughs> able to, to continue with that in person, but we're really excited about it because we believe that moving to a virtual conference, we can reach such a, a wider amount of people to attend our conference. So, um, you know, we're talking to attendees in Africa to come join. Everyone across the fresh produce industry can now sort of dial in and attend our, our conference. Leanne, thank you very much. Lovely, thank you for having me. And that was Leanne Jones. She's country manager for PMA Southern Africa. Native Grow more worthless. Like
dit nie soos die perfecte brengkie nie. Dit kan perfect aan die buitenkant lyk, maar weet jy recht af wat aan die binnenkant hang gaan? Sukkel die diere wie een spierstuifheid en la reproduksievlakke, wat leid tot een swak produksie vir u. Hulle kan in een selenium tekort leid. Dit is een algemene probleem, wat baie essa plase aantref. Selowin, behandel en voorkom een selenium tekort met die eenmalige behandeling. Voorsien genoegsame selenium vir tot een jaar in beeste en een jaar en een half in skape, om immuniteit voor planting en produksie te help. Praat vandag met jou veeerts oor Selowin. We are still celebrating Women's Month. Don't miss Wednesday's episode of PLAS TV, where we will have two awesome ladies with us in the studio. Inge Lothar from The Bigger Picture and Ikaheng Maluleke from Grain Essay. Good luck with your week.